Deadly Dames this weekend we were at Scotland Comic Con for the love of the 80s uh, we had a fantastic time there spent all of our money um, but whilst we were there we um, we didn't actually go as mad as we normally did it was actually a fantastic event it's actually probably one of the most organised events that we've ever been to what we really liked about this was um, the last time we were in the EICC centre which I always forget what it stands for the Ed- Edinburgh International you know, Conference Centre Conference Center. I'm glad that Claire's there to remind me what it stands for but the last time we were in there and actually most times that we go to Comic Cons is that you tend to find that the vendors and the guests are all in the one room and it actually makes it really difficult when you go in there for movement because everybody's sort of squashed in the one place and even when you go to like Glasgow Comic Con when the guests are upstairs you've kind of got to manoeuvre your way around about the vendors to try and get up the stairs to get to them what these guys did is they actually had all the guests and like the cars and everything in the one room and then when you come downstairs from the escalators they had all the vendors in the other room now initially when we came in we actually missed the signs saying the vendors were one way that was our fault the signs were actually there uh, and then they had all the guests in the other room and that was a fantastic layout because it meant that you were everybody wasn't packed into one area and all squashed and overheating because the one problem with comic cons is that everybody sweats and it is roasting and smelly <laughs> it's true though it is but it wasn't like that at the same comic con because it wasn't everybody squashed in the one place and it was well laid out and well designed and well thought out you could tell they'd really put a lot of thought into it they also had a tannoy announcing when everything was happening and they gave out um schedules to let everybody know free schedules and to let everyone know what was happening and they had tvs so letting you know everything so basically it was kind of well suited for literally everybody so because not everybody can hear not everybody can see not everybody had access and it was kind of designed for literally anybody very family friendly eh, and very accessible what's the word i'm looking for claire I think you said very people accessible, right? Ah, yeah. Um, suitable for everybody. Um, mm. but yeah, I I really really liked that. But they had tannoys that announced literally everything that was happening because when you go to these events, it's very easy to get wrapped up and excited uh, and forget everything that you've gone there to do. I mean, I've certainly went before, and I remember one of the years we went and we were going to see. It wasn't to this Comic Con. But we went and the person we were excited to see was Robert England. And we went to a different person's talk and we actually forgot that we had a photo shoot with Robert England. And we sat down, I'll not say the person's talk, but we sat down to see this other person's talk and halfway through them talking, we suddenly remembered we were supposed to be at a photo shoot. And very embarrassingly, and we were right in the middle of the like the row, we had to stand up and do that sheepish sliding past everybody, take it out. And then we had to run to get to the photo shoot. But what I loved, what these guys did, the Monopoly event crew, is they had a tannoy that announced everything that was happening. Now, I suppose it was quite difficult if, when, because we were pressed when you were talking to somebody, doing an interview or just chatting um, to like cosplayers and things, that suddenly the tannoy went off. But it was fantastic because it let you knew, you know, you knew, you can tell I'm tired, you know exactly what was going on throughout the do uh, is throughout the day the do day throughout the day what was happening so they'd announce like it's David Hasselhoff's photo shoot or it's David Hasselhoff's um signing and I I thought that was a great idea so you couldn't forget you couldn't do what happened to us um and have to do that embarrassing sneaking out of the the Q and A but anyway enough about how fantastic I thought the the guys had organised it and I did it was actually, as I said it was the best organised event that I'd ever been to and I'd highly recommend going to one of their shows purely and simply for that alone but on top of that I actually thought the guest line up and was amazing as well um, David Hasselhoff's queue was out the door uh, he's, if you'd seen his queue for his photo shoot it was massive at one stage um, we went for food and when we came back his photo shoot queue was still going so you could tell the man was popular but we um i'll start off with the artwork that we picked up you know us we always say we're not buying artwork and then we buy artwork but we got artwork by paul butcher this is the guy that actually designed the poster for the love of the 80s and we actually did pick up one of the posters we weren't going to but then we did and it, we, to be honest it wasn't expensive the poster I actually loved that they designed it like a 
old school VHS. Um, so I'll show you the poster first. I actually didn't want one this big, but they only had one this big. Um, I know that some of the guests cancelled that were there. We did say what happened to the snooker players because there was no announcement to say they weren't going to be there. We've made a couple of jokes saying what if they were like in a separate room or what if they forgot to pick them up from the airport and they're still sitting there. But they didn't appear to make an announcement to see what was going to happen with these guys. We think maybe they're sitting somewhere and no one's told them what's going on. Poor guys. I'm sure there's an announcement somewhere about them. But I do love that this looks like um, Tron, this bit. Um, but I do love that this is all 80s and I think this artist is very talented and you'll see why in a minute. So he was actually in the main hall and the reason that he told us the reason why he was in the main hall is because he designed the poster. He's also designed the poster for The Love of the Sci-Fi, which is the next event that they're doing on the 2nd and 2nd. First and second. December, I think. But we picked this one up from him because I love Jaws and I think this is amazing. And we also got this one, which is uh, for Claire because she loves Halloween. But he had so many things there that were fantastic. Um, He'd done one called Mary Poppins, but it was actually uh, a like Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, the really guy funny. with the big... I almost forget his uh, name. The blue guy that whistles and arrows. Yeah, and he's got like, a big afro. Not an afro, sorry. A big... Mohican. Mohican is the word I'm looking for. I'm doing this. I'm glad that you got that from this. And he's like flying through the air. It was really funny. Yeah, but his artwork was fantastic. I would uh, recommend it if you're going to one of the events and he's there. Go and have a look at his stall. His stuff was amazing. Um, we also got some stuff signed. Let's see if I can reach it. I can't reach Come it. On, you can do it. I can't. I can't do it. I'm too little. He okay, also bought a lot of fudge um, both Saturday and Sunday, which is why she's uh, <laughs> struggling a wee and bit. And I totally <laughs> ate it all by myself. All by I, yourself. Well, apart from those bits that you forced me to eat. Mm hmm. I said no, but she said that I had to. She yeah, I to ate it. it all by myself, Claire. That's Claire's. That's the reason why Claire's hiding behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we um we got a signature by um Sam J Jones. We when we went to well we like Flash Gordon anyway. We're still waiting for a really good edition or a Blu-ray edition over here in the UK. I think there's a kind of standard one, but I keep waiting for a company like Arrow or Indicator or one of those guys just to do to give to do do. Why why do I keep saying the word do do? <laughs> to give this movie a really good edition that it deserves because Flash Gone's a fantastic movie but um, his Q&A was hilarious he was really funny but um, yeah we went for this one which is like the poster but he was really funny there was actually a cosplayer dressed as a uh, Ming the Mercenless which is really funny as well but Claire's obsessed now with getting all of her signatures to both of us you can tell I'm happy by that you're very happy I had to cave. But anyway, mm. I'm just happy to get his signature. But yeah, he was lovely. Uh, and you got... You're going to have to say his surname because I keep saying it wrong. You, I think it's pronounced Ferrigno. Ferrigno. Again, to both of us. We, we had a bit of a disagreement. You wanted a Hercules. I wanted a Hulk. I won... But I didn't get the Hulk picture yeah, that I, I wanted. I wanted the one that he was kind of glowing in. I yeah, like that a one compromise. better. I still think the picture I chose would have been better. But, uh, and then we got Zach, can I keep pronouncing his name wrong? Uh, Galligan. Galligan. Um, Zach was a bit of a strange character. He wasn't rude or anything, he just wasn't overly chatty. I think he was all business. Yeah. Well, yeah. some of them are. Yeah, but that was to both of us as well. Whatever you do, do not ask him about Gremlins 3. We didn't, but we've seen the the after effect of many people asking about Gremlins 3. So don't <laughs> do it. That's just a forewarning. <laughs> uh, um, I did go to a stall and buy... Oops, that's, it, that's gone. I did go to a stall and buy an autograph um, of, from an actress that I'm a big fan of. I don't think I'll ever meet this actress in person. I do generally like to get autographs in person or get someone I know to get them in person for me. Um, but I'll never get to meet this actress. And if I do, obviously I'll just get the signature again. But she she doesn't tend to do signings. and But I love her. Uh, and that's Sarah Polly. 
Um, she was in the remake of Dawn of the Dead and Splice, um, and then she starred in quite a lot of things when she was a child actress. But this is a signature from Dawn of the Dead, and I, I just really wanted that she she's becoming harder and harder to get autographs now and I was glad to finally get one but yeah I love Sarah Polly um, and I was glad to finally pick this one up and then the last autographs that we have here was actually we managed to do an interview with this actor and he was he was absolutely lovely the interview is going to be on the Geek Legion of Dooms channel and um, his link as always is going to be above I always say below but it is above and he kindly gave both of us an autograph. Um, we he didn't need to, but he did, uh, and that is Robert McNaughton from E. T. Um, e. T. is one of my all-time favorite movies, and I think because I told him this about a million times, I had a happy overload talking to him about E. T. And I think he knew that is the reason why he gave us a signature. And um, we spoke for quite a while, about ten fifteen minutes about E. T. Mm -hmm. And um, I told him I'd see him in Manchester when we went down. Um, I think. He was saying that Henry and Dee will be there and that we should go to the Q&A with all of them there because um, Dee's a force into herself and Henry has different memories from him with, about the movie. So it'll be, he says it's good to come to the Q&A and basically get all of their memories about the movie. But you could tell he had really good memories talking about E.T. and, uh, and about basically his experience on the film set. But yeah, this is uh, the signatures that he gave to me. And do clear. And please go over to uh, Geek Legion of Doom's channel and check out our interview with him. We also did an interview with Jack Stoffer. I keep pronouncing his name wrong. Um, from Battlestar Galactica. And there's a good few Q and A's which will be on this video, but there's also some that will be on Geek Legion of Doom's channel. So please go over there and check out his. There is one more purchase, which made Claire super happy, mm -hmm. um, made her bank account super poor, but um, do you want to show everybody what you bought, Claire? It makes you feel like a superhero. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought this uh, Conan sword. It oh, this Conan much, sword? Uh, much persuasion. And what had happened, it used to be the shop in Glasgow called Stuff. And I remember when I first moved to Glasgow about, I was going to say 10 years, but I think it's closer to 12 now. Time flies when you're getting old. Um, <laughs> and I was always a massive Conan fan and they used to have a collection of swords. And I remember when I saw this, this sword, I was like, oh, I really wanted it. But at the time it was too expensive and I thought, no. And where I was living at the time, I thought, no, I can't really like turn up at a flat that I'm sharing with two other people that I don't know very well with a, a big sword. So I kind of put it off. I thought, you know, future buy, and then I never saw it again. And every now and again, it, it, it comes up where I'll tell Mandy how much I regret not buying the sword. So anyway, I saw it on the Saturday at this guy's stall, and I was a bit excited, and I thought, I'll, call, I'll put it off, because um, we were trying to be good. And uh, I did the thing that me and Mandy always do each other, where... You know, I'll tell her about something that I've seen. Say, I really like it, but I won't buy it. It's fine. And then she'll say, oh, no, maybe you should. And I said, no, 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 it's okay. And she said, look, you regretted it the last time you didn't buy it. Just go and get it. Okay. And she does that with me and I do that with her. And I think we're both quite bad for that. Like, we have got self-control, but we just encourage each other to go for it. But I'm glad that I bought it. Is it come. heavy? It's quite heavy. Um, I'm going to touch oh your sword. Now, for the record, Mandy is e extremely clumsy. <laughs> oh, it's heavy. So, if you hear a, a clatter and a scream, <gasps> it's really heavy. heavy. It's, uh, it's fine. She's is just business as usual. So, you know, this is actually real. It, it's not sharp, but it is very, very heavy. Well... I think if I was to hit you full force with this, it would hurt. I think it would hurt a little mm. bit. It's, it is actually bit. heavy. Claire, it would you like heavy. me to polish the sword after touching it? <laughs> yeah, but mm. it, is, it is actually really, really nice. It mm. does come with a... a hey, do you hear how fast Claire's voice is getting? Because I'm touching the sword. I'm a, I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> it 
I'm worried that one the saw is going to get broken and that she might slice off her own ear if she tries to swing well, it around. I'll put it back, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but anyway, as I said, it came with a, a wall plaque to mount it on, so I just need to figure out where I'm going to put it. I was thinking maybe next to my corn poster. Ooh. I think it would look good next to the corn poster. So do I. But that was, uh, that was my... Panic purchase. Big buy, but it was actually a really good price. It wasn't that expensive. No. But it wasn't uh, as expensive as the first time I saw it, so it was worth waiting. Oh, past my boobs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's everything that we got from the Love of the 80s. As I said, I was actually really impressed by this con. I thought it was well organised, great guests. Um, I loved that they had the tannoy that announced everything that was happening throughout the day because, as I said, we've been to we've been to many cons before where we've completely forgot what was happening throughout the day. We've missed Q and A's. We've actually as I said we've almost missed photo shoots. We've all, <laughs> we've actually missed guests getting stuff signed because we have lost track of days. Whereas these guys were shouting throughout the day, get this person's signature, get this person's autograph because they were announcing when people were going for lunch and returning from lunch, which I thought was fantastic. So mm -hmm. they were very, very organised with what they were doing throughout the day, um, which I thought was really good. And which I thought was a fantastic idea. The, um, I, was, I was really impressed by them. I would recommend going to a Monopoly event if there's one near you. As I said, they are having the For the Love of Sci-Fi on the 1st and 2nd of December, which we are really looking forward to. It's got Bridget Nielsen, Red Sonia, if you don't know who she is, and the guys from Predator. I think you're looking forward to Jesse Ventura. Mm -hmm. We're debating over um, whether to get Running, Running Man. Man or Predator. Running Man. Well, oh, Predator. I'll get Running Man, you get Predator. And it's got Bill Duke and we'll Carol Weathers. both of us. That'll really piss her off. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bill Duke's Carol Weathers and obviously the whole E.T. cast. Well, well, not the whole E.T. cast. It's got Dee Wallace and Henry Thomas and then obviously um, Robert McNaughton's going to be there again. Plus more. I can't remember everybody else is going to be I there. I think the, the long oh, Some guys at Stranger Things are going to be there. It's going to be an expensive weekend for most. <laughs> Yeah, I posted a picture of uh, a wall that opened with the nun inside and it had a picture of the nun. <laughs> so it'll look like that again. But yeah, I recommend them. I thought they fantastic. Um, they had a big Johnny Five there. Mm -hmm. It I called like me Johnny a bozo. <laughs> it told me my mum looked like a snowblower. <laughs> we'll put a picture of Johnny Five at the end of this. Put a video of him at the end of this. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was, it, was, uh, it was good. We had a fantastic weekend. And if you went to, for the love of the 80s, let us know. If you had a good weekend, um, and what your favourite thing was, uh, if you got to meet the Hoff, we didn't, but we thought it was funny that you wore the Don't Haggis the Hoff t-shirt. We've seen some strange looking photos of the Hoff posing with people, but it just shows you his sense of humour. And uh, yeah, we had a fantastic weekend. Take care. Hey, laser lips! <laughs> <laughs> Your mama was a snowblower. Because <laughs> Joe Dante always used to used to kind of say that the Gremlins was it's a wonderful lizard of Oz in hell is what he kind of called uh, <laughs> Gremlins, right? He even throws it's a wonderful life in there, right? It's my mom's watching it on the TV, you know, and he's running. He's like, hi, movie house, that old clip and everything like that. And Kingston Falls is. Deliberately designed to kind of look like the Jimmy Stewart town, and and I'm kind of deliberately designed to be sort of like the Jimmy Stewart, you know, uh, every man kind of uh, hi mom, hi dad, I'm home kind of thing, you know, which is very like 19, 1940s, 1950s Hollywood. So it was all very kind of cleverly done by design, you know, by by Joe Dante, who's very very uh, shrewd student of film. So you know. You, you're not going to beat him at film Trivial Pursuit ever. It's just not going to happen. He's just he's seen. He has a library of something like a thousand actual movies at his house, and he's seen something like thirty thousand movies in his lifetime, and he just memorizes everything. So he's like put a little there, and put a little this, and put a little, bit, a little there. And I, I actually used to um, play with him on the set a little bit about it, and it actually spawned one of the more popular scenes. We were walking through the department store, and I saw a chainsaw on the wall. 
And I said, oh, is that your Toby Hooper uh, tribute? Meaning that he was the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And he goes, actually, as a matter of fact, it is. Because that's a Joe has kind of a squeaky voice like that. And I go, yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I grabbed that baseball, but then I had the little baseball bat thing? Wouldn't that be cool if there's like a baseball bat chainsaw fight between like me and the gremlin? Wouldn't that be an awesome idea? And Joe goes, give me about five minutes. And he turns around and he walks away. I'm like, what's going on? And that's when we came up with the ba baseball bat chainsaw fight on the spot right there and just decided that we were going to do it and choreograph it like right there on the spot and just shot the whole thing. Just off an of offhand comment that I made as a joke about him, you know, always putting film references in his movies, which he does. And Gremlins 2, is, there's like 90 film references in it or something insane like that. You can go through it and watch it over and over again. You're like, oh yeah, Gremlins, there's a time machine reference if you watch really closely. Uh, where my dad's at the thing, he's at the, like a convention and he calls home and in the right corner of the movie there's uh, people sitting in a time machine and then it cuts back to like my mom talking to him on the phone and when it cuts back, the time machine is gone and people are on the floor looking at it, like where it's gone. Did you ever catch that one? Did you catch that one? You can go back and watch it, you'll see. It's kind of, kind of funny. It has all sorts of stuff happening in the background of the frames that you have to just go back and watch it. everything really closely and pick up all these inside jokes in Gremlins 1 and particularly in Gremlins 2. You don't need a sequel. You just have a good film, yeah? You don't need a prequel or a sequel or a 20 part series that looks into the psychology. Just let it be what it is, a good film. And it's a great not, film. It's not like Star Wars or Indiana Jones where you can have the continuing adventures of this you know, swashbuckling character going into another adventure. It's like a, a, that's a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, it's, it's a fable kind of. So it, it ends, and then to, to have it start up again. So, you know. It's just nice the way it is. Yes. We've got time for one last question. You pick. There's a few people. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want the decision. Right here in the middle. What's your favorite movie? What's my favorite movie? That always changes. That always changes. But just recently, I just watched the Alien again, the Ridley Scott film. I watched it with my oldest boy. And, um, don't watch that for a while. Well, not my oldest, my second oldest boy. And that, I, I don't see any flaws in that movie. That movie is great. It is and awesome. I love that movie. But, you know, my, my, my favorite film always changes. But Alien's one of them. My wife and I love AI as well. My favorite part in E.T.? In E.T., my favorite scene that I filmed is a scene that I have in the garage um, where Henry and I are talking about our dad's stuff that, you know, we're, that we're putting, trying to find parts for the communicator. And I always love that scene because it's real, it's a scene where I'm real close with Henry and, and um, it's, it's real intimate, that scene. Um, my favorite part of the film that I didn't film that's in the movie is the scene that Elliot has when he's saying goodbye to E.T. And I just think it's, it's just brilliant. The way it was filmed through that, uh, the top, the lid of that, um, that white thing that E.T.'s in. And it's just beautiful. That's my favorite. It's like, it gives me chills even just talking about it. Because I didn't watch that scene being filmed. Most of the scenes in the movie that I'm not in, I didn't get to see being filmed because we were in school. So when I saw that, it just, that's the part I cried in, because a lot of it was improvised too. A lot of it was uh, Henry talking about how much he missed E.T. and Ed, that, it just gets me every time. And then Peter Coyote's in that scene as well. Um, I love his performance in it. One of the performances you said, you said that children's performances knocked you out. One of the performances that it took me being, reaching adulthood, to appreciate was was um, D. Wallace. D. Wallace is amazing in that, and it's like nothing. She's not unnatural in any moment in that film, and she has the hardest job in the film, in my opinion, because she's one of the kids, but she's also you know the adult, and and that's why Stephen. That's why the only adult you see in the film is her. All the other adults are filmed from the waist down, and you don't see their faces. And that was on purpose because she had, she's almost like a child herself. 
and that's why Stephen cast her. And she really pulled it off beautifully. I remember there was a scene where Elliot's lost, and, uh, and we don't know where he is, and there's a cop in our kitchen, and uh, the, the cop is, he shows up, this actor, and he's got dialogue in a Steven Spielberg film, and he was so excited, and then when he saw where the camera was, he was just dismayed, and you know, he realized he wasn't gonna be on camera. <laughs> it's like, oh no, oh no, he got a part, and now he's not even gonna be seen, you know? You're not gonna see his face. So, that's my favorite part of the film, though, is when, when Henry's talking to E.T. Can't watch that with dry eye. Don't know about all the in that particular thing. That gets me every time. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid, but it's been lovely to meet you. E.T. will still be one of the best, if not the best, family films ever, and I cannot wait for my little girl to be old enough to sit down and watch it. But the minute she's not old enough, and those of you, come to Manchester if you can, because I swear to God, my favorite thing about these panels is doing it with Dee and Henry, because it's like, well, Dee's a force of nature, but I mean, they, they remember so many things I didn't remember. I remember more than Henry usually, but he has other things that he seems that he filmed that I don't, I wasn't part of, so it really is, it's great with all of us. I'm sorry they couldn't be here. We still got you, everybody. Thank you.